The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the National Association of Elementary School Principals webinar, Inspired to Lead, Tips to Encourage the Next Generation of Great Principals. I am Carol Riley, Director of the NASP Mentor Program and will be your host for this afternoon. I'm located at the NASP headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia. The National Association of Elementary School Principals is proud to support our future leaders by focusing on ways to encourage, support, and develop the principals who are and will be leading our schools in the 21st century. We know the importance of having a strong pipeline for those leaders. And you, as current principals, are challenged to recognize and identify those individuals who demonstrate the skills to move our schools ahead and to lead communities in the education of all children. Then to encourage those individuals to become the leaders they aspire to be. During today's webinar, there will be two polls in which you will have the opportunity to share your thoughts and ideas. Our audience today is from states all across our country. And the audience includes principals, aspiring principals, central office administrators, and assistant principals, as well as many NAESP mentors and coaches. Also during the webinar, you may write questions in the box on the right of your screen. At the end of the webinar, you'll then have an opportunity to hear the speaker respond to those questions. Also, this webinar will be archived for future viewing through the NAESP website. Our presenter today is Dr. Melissa Patchkey. Dr. Patchkey is the proud principal of Upper Providence Elementary School in Pennsylvania. Missy is very involved with the National Association of Elementary School Principals and serves on many committees and in many capacities. She's the NAESP State Representative for the State of Pennsylvania, and she's a nationally certified principal mentor and coach for our program. Missy will also be the presenter at our mentor training in Pittsburgh in June 2012. We certainly hope many of you will be able to join us there. She's also the proud parent of two young women, one cute kitty, and two really awesome dogs, which I've had the pleasure of uh, seeing. You'll also hear from principals and an aspiring principal who are colleagues of Dr. Patchkey's in the Spring Ford Area School District. These voices from the field help to frame and shed light on our important work which is inspiring others to lead. I know you're going to enjoy the energy and enthusiasm of Dr. Patchkey, and we look forward to sharing this information with you. At this time, I'm proud to turn this webinar over to Dr. Patchkey. Thank you, Carol. Hey, good afternoon to everybody. I'm honored to be your host today. After 24 years uh, in education and multiple experiences in school leadership, I truly believe that learning how to identify, develop, and inspire great leaders is critical to the future of our success of our students. Now, during my career, many great principals have positively influenced my leadership journey. I'd like to ask you to think for just a moment and reflect on your own experiences. I'm sure there were people and events which inspired you to become a principal. Although each of your stories is unique, what I've found is that there truly are commonalities, and that's what we're going to explore. Now to start out, inspiration and encouragement are two words which will thread through our learning today. I'd like to remind you of a story that's been around for a little bit. It's called the push. Whether it's courage, faith, or innate wisdom, every eagle mother knows that she must push her youngsters out of a nest. Nature tells the eagle that until her children discover their wings, there is no purpose in their lives. One by one, mother e a mother eagle pushes her youngsters and they fly. Now the push for us is encouragement, 
It's inspiration. It's the confidence to know that someone else believes in you. The push has the power to change a life forever. During today's presentation, we are going to explore important fundamentals to ensure strong principal succession. We will discover how to push the right future leaders into the role of a school principal. Now, my objectives for you today include recognizing the importance of influencing strong leaders to become school principals, pinpointing research-based core competencies of effective school principals, identifying what practitioners feel are key characteristics of great principals, distinguishing specific ways which current school principals can influence protégés to lead schools, and explore the value of connecting with peer-to-peer -peer support programs. Now let's take a moment to understand why encouraging the right leaders to the principalship is so important. In the state of Texas, Dr. Ed Fuller and Dr. Michelle Young conducted a study on principal tenure and retention. During that study, they discovered that about 50% of new principals in Texas remained in their jobs at least three years. They also noted that elementary schools have the longest principal tenure and the greatest retention rates. Also, less than 30% of newly hired high school principals stayed in the same school at least five years. Now, principal retention really does matter because teacher retention and qualifications are greater in schools where principals stay longer. Keep in mind that school reform efforts are reliant on principals creating a common core vision and staying in place to implement the level of reforms that are part of that large-scale change. When a principal leaves, a school loses that investment in capacity building, which greatly and directly impacts student learning. The Southern Regional Education Board outlines critical actions which should be taken to address principal succession. They note that this responsibility falls on states, universities, and us, the principals themselves. In a recent report, SREB noted that each year more than 18,000 principals in our nation's public schools leave their jobs. These jobs must be filled by future principals, with, but they need strength of character, they need knowledge of learning, and they need leadership savvy to be able to th thrive in what's considered right now as one of education's most challenging jobs. Now, what does it take to give the push to 18,000 principals each year? We might ask ourselves, how do I know that I am encouraging the right leaders? What are the core competencies of effective leaders? Well, we are going to examine the answers to these questions in two ways. First. What does the research say, and how does that compare next to the field and people that are actually in the field and what they think are key qualities of effective leaders? Education is clearly a team sport. All winning teams have strong leaders. The authors of Strength-Based Leadership describe the most effective leaders as always surrounding themselves with the right people to maximize their team. Effective leaders understand qualities of those that follow them. Think of how this relates to you as you are considering who should be those future leaders. Chapman defines a team as a group of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, performance goals, and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable. Now, how will the future leader you're encouraging contribute to our common purpose, goals, and how will they stand up to accountability for student achievement? As a member of the team, you need to push the right people towards leadership. There are a variety of preparation paths for aspiring principals. The best examine what students need and map backwards to empower adult learning. Some schools support aspiring principal training, some innovational teacher leadership roles, others have shadowing programs, some extend inter internship programs. And almost all of them provide an understanding of the attributes that quality leaders demonstrate. As we move through the next part of our learning, be sure that you're reflecting on which of 
these attributes you model in your own leadership. Now on your screen you see several pieces of research, all of which communicate elements of effective principles. We are going to concentrate our clinical understanding on a few of these most valuable resources. To begin, the Wallace Foundation study on school leadership has identified two critical ways that strong school leaders are connected to student achievement. First, through the support and development of effective teachers. Second, through the implementation of effective organizational processes. Effective principals develop a strong understanding of how to support teachers. They manage the curriculum in ways that promote student learning, and they also develop the ability to guide their school to foster powerful teaching and learning for all. The Wallace Foundation research indicates that principals who improve student achievement performance and they will show these, following, these five following characteristics. First, shaping a vision of academic success for all students. The principal makes sure that the idea of academic success for all is picked up by faculty and other school supports. Having high expectations for all students is one key to closing an achievement gap between the advantaged and the less advantaged students. Next. Creating a climate of support that's supportive to education. Effective principals provide an upbeat, welcoming, solution-oriented, no-blame professional environment and make an effort to include staff and students in a variety of activities, many of them with a school-wide emphasis. Next, cultivating leadership in others. Principals play a major role in developing a professional community of teachers who guide one another in improving instruction. Great principles ensure student progress is a shared responsibility and a shared victory. Improving instruction. Effective principles encourage continual professional learning. They emphasize strategies to improve teaching and learning. They initiate discussions about instructional approaches both in teams and with individual teachers. And finally, effective principles manage people, data, processes, all to foster school improvement. Effective leaders need to make good use of resources at hand. They use data not only to pinpoint problems, but also to understand their nature and causes. Now to add to our understanding, we also need to consider the six standards for what effective, what effective principles know and are able to do, which were developed by NASP. Individually and collectively, these standards define leadership for our schools. They voice that healthy learning communities are places where adults and youth are continuously learning and striving toward to improve their knowledge and skills. Thus, effective principals need to lead schools centered on student and adult learning, set high expectations and standards for the academic, social, emotional, and physical development of all children. Demand content and instruction that ensures student achievement meets or exceeds agreed on standards. Create a culture of continuous learning tied to student success and other school goals. Gather, manage, analyze, and use data and knowledge to inform decisions and measure, measure project, progress. And finally, actively engage a school community to create shared responsibility for student performance and successful development. Now there are many strong authors out there who have added to this conversation on what makes a great principal. Here are just a few that I can recommend to you. But the one more body of research worth mentioning today is a newly released by Harvard Press, Getting It Done. It describes characteristics of leaders of successful, high-poverty, high-minority schools in the United States. Here's what the authors found. Highly effective principals are good at hiring and keeping strong teachers. They structure the work in such a way that ordinary teachers can improve their practice and be successful. They establish a school culture that encourages teachers to try new things, but they also ensure that those practices that aren't successful and improving student achievement are not continued. 
They set up systems that allow teachers to focus on the work of instruction instead of having to invent new solutions to every single problem that crops up. And most importantly, they establish the expectation that all children will be successful, and then they engage the adults in the school to be a part of solving the problems that could possibly thwart the expectations from this being realized. Next, we're going to hear the perspective from the field. Making a bridge from research to practice. I'd like to introduce to you two featured guests in our webinar today. First, Teresa Carboy. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. I have such respect for all of you. Your participation in today's webinar proves how many wonderful principals are willing to support those of us who are new or soon to be new to the job. Thanks, Teresa. Teresa's in her second year as a principal at Worsford Elementary School. Prior to being a principal, she served as an assistant principal for three years and a teacher as 11 years. Teresa helps her teachers develop professionally each year through various book studies. Not only is Teresa a colleague as a principal of mine, but she's also a parent in my school. This little guy is her handsome son, Luca, and Luca is in the middle of his first grade experience here at UPES. My next guest is Sue Choi. Hello to everyone listening. I look forward to contributing to your understanding of inspiring leadership today. Thanks, Sue. Sue is a talented third grade teacher at UPE, and not only is she strong, reflective, but she also has many natural leadership qualities. Now, similar to Teresa, one of Sue's children, Audrey, is a proud kindergartner at yet another of our sister elementary schools. And her youngest, Ethan, is an up-and-coming Spring Ford Ram, but not quite ready yet for our program, but soon. Now, Sue, we've heard about the studies, but we want to know what's important to you. As a teacher, what leadership characteristics in a principal do you find important? Well, talk with any teacher across the country, and you find a universal need. Leaders who breathe new life into our schools. The Wallace Foundation notes that while teacher effectiveness is important, it is difficult to attract effective teachers to a school with weak leadership. So the qualities in the principle that are important to me as a teacher include students first. Um, it's that shared responsibility to meet the needs of all our students. And knowing that we have um, the same priority is, is important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is that the principal values the teachers and the work that they do with the students. Knowing that my principal understands and on a personal level cares for me is important, and that's where I'm willing to take the risk as, as an educator to do better for my school. Um, third is consistent support for success in the classroom and for professional growth. Um, that um, encouragement is really important in taking the steps to improve instruction. And finally, collaborative. Um, that team oriented with shared responsibility to help all students learn because, you know, once again, it goes back to the students. That's, that's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Sue. Um, tell, expand a little bit on why, Sue, you think strong leadership is so critical to any school. Well, strong teachers experiment in their classrooms with non-traditional teaching methods. And without strong leadership that is focused on student achievement, those teachers will not receive the support or encouragement they need. And without that support, teachers, particularly young ones, will not grow or might even leave the profession. That's a great point. Thank you, Sue. Let's move on to Teresa. Teresa, I have a similar question for you. As a new principal, what traits of great leaders have been critical so far to your success? Well, Missy, as I, as I look back on my career thus far as a principal, I think number one for me would be finding the time and making the time to build strong relationships. It's important to find ways to connect with your staff, spend time with them, get to know what is important to them, especially during your first year. You can definitely help build strong relationships by being visible, present, engaging in conversations, and being a good listener. Secondly. I talk about learning the culture, respect, and tradition. So often we hear about and we all know that promoting and building a positive school culture is so important. But I think what we must also keep in mind is as a new principal, it's so important that you get to know the culture that has already been established in your school. What's important to your staff 
um, that has already been established? What do they value? What are some of the sacred cows that they have dealt with in their culture for years before you came along? Um, the other thing that I like to emphasize is being a strength finder. I think as a leader, you have to really be good at identifying the strengths and characteristics of your staff. Um, once you identify strengths, it puts you in a better position to make sure that they are successful in any role that you as the principal put them in. Um, and, and never forget to find value and encourage people for the strengths that they do have. And uh, finally, I, I have to say that reaching out to others as a new principal is so important. And I know Missy already mentioned how you know there are programs for aspiring principals in districts. Um, but I also think it's just as important to reach out to others, get to know who your teammates are, and don't be afraid to pick up the phone. And when, when you have a question, reach out to someone who has been there and may have dealt with the situation that you are currently dealing with. Thanks, Teresa. That's a great point. Just to elaborate a little bit on your end point, um, just made me think of our mentor program. Because not, honestly, you're a new principal and you're thinking that way, but I think all principals think, feel that way at times. So you really need that, collabor that collaborative teamwork sometimes. Good point. All right, let's move on. It's also important to understand what those supervising principals look for in a great principal. Dr. David Gooden, superintendent of the Springford Area School District, shared the characteristics that he looks for in a great principal. The individual needs to have a presence that inspires confidence in their leadership. This presence needs to communicate care for all stakeholders, students, parents, teachers, and support staff. A principal also needs to be able to make quick decisions based upon as much information as possible and when needed is willing to get input from others with more experience. It's also important that a principal be the instructional leader in the school. This means setting high expectations for all, being a coach for students and teachers, and the chief cheerleader of the school. Another quality Dr. Gooden looks for is the ability to handle several issues at once all the while prioritizing the order in which issues should be addressed. Finally, a good quality is the ability to foresee potential problems before they occur and to take steps to mediate and score to avoid, the, avoid these problems. Yeah. A school principal is held accountable for all aspects of a school. A school principal must be a versatile leader. In any given day, the principal can be a curriculum consultant, budget analyst, public relations representative, mediator, disciplinarian, manager. Our final stakeholder group is the parent community. What do they require in a quality school leader? As a parent, we are expecting persons who are in a safe learning environment, a quality education for children, upholding traditions that are important to the students, and the support for our child's teacher, including professional development, resources, and knowledge. I completely agree with Sue. And I will also add that we need a principal who is approachable by parents and students, who maintains important emails or communications to parents with news and announcements. And the principal should work collaboratively with teachers. They know my child. They should be heard and be part of school-wide decisions. OK, thank you. Ladies, we're going to shift our attention now onto the audience. As school leaders, what core competencies stand out to you as most valuable to your own success? Please use the voting tools to indicate which of the following would reflect your top choices. The ability to vision of academic success for all students. The ability to create a climate hospitable to education. The ability to cultivate leadership in others. The ability to manage people, data, and processes to foster school improvement. OK. So Carol back at NASP is going to run the poll with our participants today. And ladies, I was thinking, I, I was curious, how would you answer if, if you were taking this poll? Well, I, I can start off by saying when I look at what is most val valuable to my success, and I think all of them are very important, but the one that stands out for me is shaping a vision of academic success for all students. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I think as a principal, and, and I know you know this, Miss, we, you know, there are times where you have to make some difficult decisions. Right. And I think what has helped me in the past is asking myself what is in the best interest for this child. So always putting the child first has always helped me or guide me with my decisions when, when it's a difficult one. That's a good point, right. Okay. And it, in addition, I, I believe that too, the, um, the priority for the students, but also the climate hospitable to education kind of stands out to me um, just because I believe that working together is also the key to reach that, that shared vision. Mm -hmm. um, knowing where you are and how you can work together is important. Right. And that could, both of them, whether your vision is there or you have the supportive climate, it, it lends itself kind of to everything else that we've been talking about. Um, how important do you think it is to be that cheerleader of the school that was that Dr. Gooden talked about? Teresa, how do, what do you think about that? Do you feel like you're in that role? I, I do. And I think that you, you, can, you can't ask of your staff what you're not willing to do yourself. Um, and they do look for that support, and I think that is so important mm -hmm. um, in, in making decisions and in showing your staff that you really are there to support them. Absolutely. Right. And while Carol's still running the poll, we should have the results real soon. Sue, one of the questions that came to mind as a teacher is how important is it for your own motivation of, of operating at the classroom level to see your building principal um, in, in that cheerleader role? Uh, just to have that extra encouragement really is, is important to me. And it also shows that you're taking time uh, on the personal level to come and, and be that cheerleader. You know, we always need that support and encouragement. Right. OK, it looks like our poll is in. And uh, it, the majority of the people participating today were in agreement with Teresa. They were looking at shaping a vision of academic success. 50% of our uh, participants went there, although there definitely was interest in the other three areas as well. Managing people, data, and processes for school improvement. We didn't get have time to get into a discussion on that, but uh, that's clearly an important area as well. OK. All right, so we're ready to move on. Now, we have started about the presentation experienced principals have provided us some insight into their, uh, their own story and kind of how they got the push. So here's our first one. Missy, Bob is a veteran principal who was encouraged to explore leadership. It was so important to him as a young teacher to know that his principal at the time observed leadership potential in him. Oh, that's a great example, Teresa. You know, I thought it was really interesting that Bob, real, as a teacher, did not know it at the time, but the people around him, the leaders around him did. They saw that Bob had the key components of a great leader for our schools. Now let's examine the words aspire and inspire. Both share a Latin root, spiro, which translates as breathe or breathe life into. For the second part of our presentation, we're going to discover five tips which truly speak to what you need to do to inspire the right leaders to aspire to become great principals. Tip number one. As a leader, you must reflect upon and improve your own leadership competencies. Tip two. You must purposefully build leadership capacity. Tip three. Communicate. You need to have supportive, confidence-building, and growth-oriented conversations with potential principals. Tip four. You must provide teachers with strength-based as well as diverse leadership experiences. Tip five. You must execute an inspired leadership model. Excellent. Let's look closer at each inspirational tip. Now, there's this interesting study on aspiring principals' perceptions and what they are. And it's curious. The researchers were curious if mentor principals were actually demonstrating effective leadership characteristics. Based on the reports of aspiring leaders, they found that the most effective principal models had seven or more years of experience. They also found that aspiring principals shared that they observed their mentor principals to demonstrate high quality core competencies at a high of 59.1% to a low of 44.7% of the time. 
Now, under the topic of just school culture, one question was asked, does the principal know how to apply organizational, decision-making, and problem-solving skills to ensure an effective learning environment? The research indicated that about 60% of experienced principals were perceived by aspiring principals as able to apply these key skills to ensure an effective learning environment. Now, just think about that data for a moment because it leads us to wonder about the 40% that necessarily weren't being perceived as being effective. Is it because their skills, it was the actual skill base, or was the novice leader too inexperienced to actually break down the whole and identify core components of leadership which are actually contributing to the effective school culture? So that's something to keep in mind as you're starting to have conversations and influence new leaders. Now, the first tip that leads us right into this, reflect on your own leadership. Ask yourself, what do you stand for? Consider how do you define your leadership? How do you inspire the best in your staff? And after hearing all of the research about effective school leadership, where do you think you need growth? Right. Keep in mind that true leadership begins on the inside and stems outward. Reflection is the only way to authentically examine your inner core leadership abilities. To attract the right leaders in our profession, we must make sure that we are modeling best practices. Missy, Len is a great example of a strong, reflective leader. He grew up watching his own dad make key decisions and influence a school community as his principal. As a young teacher, Len was encouraged to explore the principalship. He followed his dad's insightful lead. Len started to question his beliefs and ideas about school leadership and quickly decided to test them out. Oh, that's a great example. I agree, Sue. Uh, Len has definitely grown to be a reflective leader, and it's also a model of a principal who was initially inspired by a veteran principal who knew and practiced this key tip. Now, number two is build leadership capacity in your staff. Actively building the capacity for leadership and teachers will encourage them to feel more confident, have a greater understanding of the system, and allow them a wider range of experiences by which to make decisions. Here are some great ways to do this in your school. Thanks, Teresa. Design purposeful learning experiences. Make it a point to create growth experiences which will benefit future leaders with long-term results. Broad-based participation. Engage your potential leaders with multiple stakeholders of your school community. Get them out of their box and into settings where they can grow. Skillfully craft relationships. Be mindful of others' wants and needs, strengths and fears. Posture your new leaders on committees or in teams where they will grow to be a contributor. Collaborative inquiry. Don't the answer. Allow your leader to work beside you on various tasks. Allow them to try out new ideas and analyze the impact of the results. Be the life preserver, but make sure you get them into the water. Reflection. Insist on personal reflection and provide models of these examples from your own leadership. And finally, conflict resolution. Listen to your upcoming, upcoming leader. Encourage him to take risks and attempt skills which are not always comfortable. Missy, Jackie was a teacher who over her career was offered and took many opportunities to build her leadership capacity. That's right, Jackie had the passion and the vision to become a school leader, and thanks to chances that were afforded to her, she gained the experience and confidence to become a great principal. Great. Our third tip involves having critical and direct communications with potential leaders. There are four main points to include in conversations. Encourage potential leaders by expressing that you believe in them and tell them that they have the foundational skills which will one day make a great leader. Take the time to know them as a person. This will allow you to authentically match their passions with the role. It will make it real for them. Take the time to discuss the individual's core strengths. It's important that they see and feel the foundation of their strengths. This ensures talents do not lay dormant and that they are used as 
uh, the leader moves ahead. Tell potential leaders what you feel are the biggest challenges of the principalship. Talk through these roadblocks with them and assure them that they will have support along the way. And finally, talk to them about what you enjoy most about being a school principal. What are the biggest rewards of the job? Share your story. Explain what helped you make the decision to step into the leadership realm and why you have stayed in the job as well. Next example of an principal who was engaged critical conversations during his career. Jeff always make learning a experience for kids. As a child himself, he didn't have the best memories <clears throat> of a positive learning environment. During his teaching career, principal mentors talked with Jeff. They told him what his strengths were and what they saw in him, and they allowed him to see how he could make a school a great place for children to learn. These mentors encouraged him to fly. Now, Jeff makes sure that all of his students have a much better elementary school experience than he did as a youngster. Thanks to the push, Jeff makes a difference every day for the children in his school. Our fourth tip to inspire leaders is to support and or create leadership and professional development opportunities for potential principals. In short, you make a difference by helping them make a difference. Now, that means strategically matching teachers with their strengths and finding ways to allow them to taste success through diverse experiences. There are endless possibilities to how this can happen. The options are as unique as each school population, each community, and each individual. Sometimes as simple, it can be as simple as just saying yes when approached with an idea. Now, another creative way to engage teachers is to use online tools of communication and connection. Professional networks or communities of practice can be an accessible vehicle for collaboration, common understandings, and group learning. Now, keep, keep in mind that some of the most creative ways to engage teachers in leadership at school is to ask them to be in charge of opportunities for students to lead. Good point, Ms. Programs like Character Education, Student Council, Newsletters, classroom meetings, and even principal for the day programs. How cute is that t-shirt? <laughs> Today the principal, tomorrow the president. Oh gosh, so adorable. And as a young teacher, Beth was spotted by her school principal as having the qualities to be a great leader. She had the energy and was willing to put in the extra time. Beth was often asked to be in charge of different projects, which allowed her to experience the thrill of seeing a project go from start to finish. Eventually, she was hooked with leading, organizing, and managing. New roles, projects, new experiences provided Beth with constant encouragement, compliments, and confirmation that ultimately motivated her to be a leader. Excellent. I love Beth's own words. She shared this statement with me. It was so important to have someone see that special something in me and give me a chance to shine. Our final tip is to execute an inspired leadership model. Inspired leadership is the ability to take a person or a group of people to a desirable place that they could not or would not reach on their own. If a leader is seen as one who not only allows each follower to reach potential, but actually enhances that potential, he or she displays inspirational leadership. Now ask yourself, do those who I lead see me as one who will assist their personal and professional growth beyond where they could grow on their own? Learning from Lincoln, Leadership Practices for School Success, 2010. Authors share several qualities of a leader, which Abraham Lincoln emulated during his presidency and in turn relates them to effective school leadership. Many of those mentioned are also qualities of an inspired leadership model. Serving with an emotional intelligence and empathy. Use your inner resources such as self-understanding, empathy, the ability to manage anger, the capacity to motivate yourself when times are bleak. Your ability to handle relationships and to keep your attention on the school and the individuals will serve you well. Rise beyond trials through tenacity, persistence, resilience, and courage. 
Know yourself very well. The cl this clarity will give you a firm foundation to stand upon when you receive critical feedback or make difficult decisions. Use professional networking and supports to grow and work through challenges. Exercise in purposeful visibility. An inspirational leader will capitalize on face-to-face -face interactions, be accessible, and be aware of vocal tones and body language. Collect systems information from being part of the action. Work aside your staff. You will gain credibility and influence others authentically if you truly understand their role. Abraham Lincoln was a great storyteller. He knew the importance of sending his message to the people in clear, understandable terms. He also knew in his heart that the concept of hope is contagious and can truly become a reality. Optimism in leadership is critical to impacting a school culture. Inspirational leaders will enthuse others by telling a story of hope. Communication of a future vision must be felt from and believed in the heart. Barry is an example of a leader that rose from the foundation of an inspirational leadership model. As a young teen, Barry observed his own junior high principal emulate key qualities of a leader. Barry watched this veteran principal develop relationships and motivate students to do their best. Barry loved what he saw. As a young man, he already perceived the role of the principal as fun. Later, as an adult, he learned that this was the path for him to influence greatness in others. Today, others tell Barry that his best feature is his ability to reach out, connect, and inspire others. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Vito is an example of a school principal who was inspired by mentors to become a great leader. As the firstborn in a family who loved competition, Vito learned quickly how to collaborate, organize, prioritize, and use his resources to win. During his teaching career, <clears throat> Vito had several strong principles guide him toward leadership. They encouraged him to grow beyond what he could have done on his own. Vito was inspired to become better and better by the individual strengths he admired in each influential leader. Vito went on <clears throat> and won the ultimate game. Today, Vito positively impacts the lives of students every day as a great high school principal. Let's shift our attention back one more time to our audience. Everyone has their own story of inspiration. We want to know how you were inspired to aspire to school leadership. Where did your push come from? Please use the tools that are about to come up on your screen to select one of these following answers. I was inspired by a leader who modeled the heart of the principalship. I was given a chance to build my leadership capacity through a variety of experiences. A colleague encouraged me through ongoing conversations and opportunities. I enjoy a challenge and knew I would be a good leader. I jumped in on my own without a supportive push. Okay. So Carol back at NASP is going to run this poll with our participants. Mm -hmm. And while we're doing that, Teresa, why don't you start out by sharing what, what do you feel? What was the, the genesis of your story? Sure. I think for me, I, it took me um, a little bit of time to realize that as a teacher, I could actually inspire and motivate students. Um, and I think from that point on, it just energized me. And I started to think, wow, how can I reach more students? Because now I felt as if since I had this ability in me where I could inspire and motivate, I thought, how can I possibly reach others? Um, and that's when I started giving the leadership role um, some more thinking. And I had several principals throughout my career who encouraged me to take on that role <coughs> as a leader. So you were really looking for how, I felt like I had this skill, have this skill in the classroom. How can I expand it to even more people? That's right, Nikki. That's right. exactly what I was thinking. About. So you're, in the, you're involved right now with your principal training and you're working on your, your in, some elements of your internship. What has pressed you forward to consider school leadership? Um, you know, I, I feel when I think about the heart of the principalship, and I, I have this great role model, you know, sitting <laughs> right in front of <laughs> me. You. But no, I truly had this admiration for how you could look at each of the students and, and the staff and the support staff. and and truly value and, and want to know how we can all work together to make the school um, 
like a great place to be. And I love working here as a teacher. And I wanted to be able to have that, you know, um, strength as a leader and just following your lead. I, I feel like you've given me so many opportunities to take on different challenges and to give me that confidence. Um, I feel like over the past few years I, I've had so many opportunities to build that and, and I'm, of course, naturally grateful for it, but I've also gained so many different experiences from, from those opportunities. So kind of it's been a combination of the vision uh, yep. the, and <laughs> along with the opportunity. And the push. And the push. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, we have our pull-up. And it's very interesting to see that not many of those participating today felt that they did it alone. Um, it's pretty much an even split as far as our first three choices. Uh, mm. But I think what's significant here is that the majority of every of those joining us today really did have somebody kind of give them the push along the way. Excellent. All right, so let's move on. Now today we've reviewed the key characteristics of what makes a great principal. We've heard testimony from the field of why principles, great principles matter. And we've reviewed critical ways that we can inspire upcoming school leaders. Now, we've also heard how many great principals have been inspired to grow beyond what they realized was even possible. Ladies, I'd like to pull your attention to the picture on the participant screen right now. These actually are several of the principals that were identified and recognized as transformational <laughs> leaders at our NAESP convention not too long ago. So they're pretty, they, have, they each have really great stories behind them. Now, when, when you're asking yourself, all right, here's this person in front of me. I'm going to be encouraging them. Are they ready? And are you? You're looking at your protege. Are you ready to be a principal? We know that it takes more than just enthusiasm and commitment. It truly does take an in-depth understanding of organizations and adult learning theory. NAESP mentors have identified for us some of the challenges that new leaders are going to be hit with right out the gate. So when you hear these, these are some pieces that really can help you work with an upcoming protege. Understanding the wide extent of responsibilities. Having a narrow focus and adjusting to the big picture. Challenging the status quo. Being a change agent and addressing complacency taking conflicts personally. And overall, the capacity to demonstrate resiliency. Now finally, I'd like to point out a few areas of reported gaps in principal preparation programs that need to be uh, included in your discussions when you work with these individuals as they aspire to the principalship. Defining issues that are directly related to core instruction. How to build a positive school culture. During a mentor training, one participant stated that princi aspiring principals have trouble, and I love the way she phrased this, taking a balcony view instead of being on the dance floor, which we all know sometimes even experienced principals have a tough time with. Prioritizing critical issues and sharing leadership while recognizing strengths in others. Excellent. Now finally, I want to remind everyone that all principals benefit from peer-to-peer -peer support. It's clear that those new to the realm of school leadership benefit from a mentor relationship. But it's also important to realize that those of us with experience benefit as well. Through formal mentor training, I encourage all of you to build your core competencies and enhance your professional relationships. Mentoring provides us with a great tool to sharpen our own blade while supporting fellow principals towards the success of our team. Always keep in mind that a great teacher can create and sustain a great classroom, but only a principal can create and sustain a great school. Now, this is our final reflection activity. I ask everyone in the audience to be ready to write down a few things. So pencil and paper is going to be needed. Write down one key tip you heard today which you don't want to forget. Write down one suggested resource 
or big idea, which you'll explore after the webinar. Think of all the awesome qualities of an effective school principal. Jot down one area in which you want to grow. And in the next four weeks, <clears throat> promise yourself that you will meet with two potential leaders and have a candid discussion about your belief in them. Excellent. Many thanks to both Teresa and Sue for their contributions to our learning today. It was, it was just terrific to have both of you here. Oh, thank you for having us. You're so welcome. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Good. In closing, I'd like to thank all the generations of school leaders who have come before us. We appreciate your courage, passion, and love of the profession. Thank you for your words of advice and encouragement. Your motto has provided us the privilege of leading our schools. We aspire to do the same for the next generation of great school principals. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you, Missy. Uh, we do have some questions that we would like to ask you, but before that, um, I would like to share some information about our mentor training and certification program uh, that NASP has had in operation since 2003. Um, the National Association certainly recognizes that all teachers all aspiring principals and all new novice principals absolutely need someone in a supportive role, a mentor, a coach, a colleague, someone who is there to help them reflect and think through the roles in which they serve. Our national program is a three-day training, uh, which is called our Leadership Immersion Institute. What makes our mentor program different from some others and some state-initiated programs is that we have a nine-month certification program. We believe it's critical to have mentors who are highly qualified, highly trained to really perform the functions that um, provide the supports for a novice principal to become effective as quickly as possible and to uh, help develop their leadership skills. Through the certification program, our coaches work with these individuals who are uh, mentors and help them develop skills as mentors. We know that an excellent principal is not necessarily an excellent mentor. And we know that there are many discrete skills that mentors have to have. And many of those, uh, Missy and Sue and Teresa, you mentioned during the webinar today. So I would encourage individuals to become involved in our program. Um, we certainly support that every novice principal should have at least two years with a mentor. And we are, through our research, are finding that many states are now uh, developing programs or are legislating mentor programs to support their new administrators. But we certainly would like to um, involve the people in our, on our webinar today in our program. Uh, Missy will be the trainer in Pittsburgh in June, and we have an exciting training coming up in Seattle um, just prior to our national conference. One other thing for our participants to uh, consider is membership in the national organization. NAESP is the only organization that advocates for all principals. Elementary and middle school principals uh, have such important roles to fill in the education of the children in our country. And membership in our association helps aspiring principals to stay on the cutting edge of what is happening in our field. So I would encourage everyone to join the association. We have a, a wonderful board of directors uh, and become more involved and engaged in the professional work that we do. Um, Missy, I think we can now go on to our questions. Sounds good. What do you have? The first question that came across during your discussion was, 
uh, what supports really are necessary and how can you achieve those supports as an aspiring or a new principal if you don't have um, close colleagues in your school or in your district that can support you. The person who asked the question said, my nearest um, elementary school colleague is 20 miles away. It's in a very rural district. So the question is, how can you access supports when you don't have um, individuals that are close to you in location? Yeah, that's a great question. I can, t I can speak from some of my colleagues that I've met through NASP are in a similar situation where they're very rural um, proximity, not very close to just uh, walking or driving down the street to talk to somebody. Like Teresa and I are so lucky we're less than a mile apart in our schools. But I would say this is a perfect platform to reach out to some type of supportive network in your area, whether that's a national association, a state association. Oftentimes, um, there are points of collaborative discussions with principals. Also, there's, like Sue had pointed out with the community of practices uh, slide, there are many online resources now through webinars, Skype, and just simply phone connections that are important for principals to have supportive colleagues. Teresa, do you have any other resources that you've explored? Well, I was going to say definitely, and I think you mentioned it, Missy, that technology piece. There's so many ways to stay connected nowadays. I think that becomes important to make sure we remember all the different ways that we can reach out and stay connected. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that the person that asked the question even sees value to it is important because what I have found is if you value that, you're going to find a way to connect with mentors and with colleagues that will be supportive of you. It's a matter of kind of getting out of the box and, and getting a little more creative when you're in a rural school. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was another question about how do you, how do you stay committed to improving your own, school, your own skills when there is no professional development money and mentoring is not even part of the professional development program in our school district? Yeah, wow, that's an excellent question. And I, whoever asks that, you're not alone because that is a, it's a constant conversation in my networks um, of school leaders, principals specifically. Sure. We oftentimes are the, uh, the group that the funds do disappear from. Um, one of the things I can tell you is that we have advocated from all kinds of levels uh, to try to get more support. NASP has done a super job of communicating that um, legislatively and through their networks of giving principals professional development support. But the question is, okay, it's not there, so what do you do? My advice would be you... If, if it's not going to be delivered to you, you need to walk to it. You need to find it. Like, obviously, the person's participating on this free webinar is a great avenue to try to collect and collaborate with others. Um, Teresa or Sue, do you have any other resource ideas? I would just add, um, so being a principal, being in the field of education, I think we have a certain responsibility to remain to our professionalism and that entails, you know, providing for our own professional development. And like Missy said, I think you have to reach out um, as a potential leader, as a leader, and stay committed to improving your own skill by setting goals for yourself every single year. Um, and as you meet those goals, continue to set new ones. But definitely reach out to tons of literature that's out there. Um, and I think it just becomes a personal goal that as a leader, uh, you have to develop yourself professionally when those opportunities aren't provided to you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's getting close to 530. So at this point, I would like to thank Missy very, very much for sharing her enthusiasm and experience as a school leader. Uh, the topics you shared with us are timely and so important for aspiring principals, novice principals, as well as experienced principals. 
And I'd also like to thank our colleagues from Springport Area School District, Teresa Carboy and Sue Choi. Um, your commitment to supporting uh, Missy as your, as your colleague and your principal um, is really the true uh, heart of our profession, that everyone does stay together and support each other. So we appreciate your time and effort in sharing your perspectives from the field. Um, so participants, we hope you join us in Seattle for our national convention on March 22nd and 20 to 24th. Uh, there you can meet Missy and myself in person and become a part of our greater network. Please contact um, Dr. Patchkey or myself at the email addresses on your screen, and uh, we would love to have some follow-up conversations with each of you. Thank you, and goodbye from the National Association of Elementary School Principals.